Okay, now we're going to take a look at while loops. And remember, while loops contain all the same column, common elements that we discussed for for loops. Um, they're just in a slightly different presentation, right? Their order, their location is just slightly different. Okay, before we work through each of the common elements of a while loop, I want you to just take a look and notice how the structure of the while loop, it differs from the for loop. Remember I told you the for loop was really clean looking. The while loop is still kind of clean looking, but it's not quite as clean as the for loop. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna notice is our very first common element. Um, it's the counter variable, uh, and it's declared outside of the while loop above the while loop. It's also, it's declared and initialized above the while loop. So in this example, I is declared as an integer and it's initialized to zero, meaning its start value is zero. Okay, next you're gonna notice the keyword word highlighted here, while, which indicates to our compiler that a while loop is going to be used. So after the while keyword, we have a, a set of parentheses, and within the parentheses, we have our condition statement. Um, in this instance, our condition statement is set to i is less than equal to um, less than or equal to 100. So this while loop will continue to process so long as our counter variable i is less than or equal to 100. And of course, noting again that that condition statement is a Boolean condition. So visually, the next thing that we have, and this is where it differs slightly from the for, is visually the next thing we have after we have the condition statement is we have our code block. So within the while uh, code block here, we have a system out print statement that prints the current value of i followed by a blank statement. And this is gonna be on all on one line, okay? So there is no, um, since it's a print statement, not a print ln statement, which would give us a carriage return. So this is going to print the value of i and then a space, okay? Um, and then we have, after this print statement, we have our counter modification statement, where in this instance, okay, as I mentioned, the code block for a while loop also contains the counter modification statement. So in this instance, a compound operator is used to increment our counter variable i by 10. Okay, so if we were to add our while loop to a properly formatted main method within a class, our output would look like this. Uh, a string of values starting at our, initializ our counter initialization value of zero being increased by 10 to 100, to include 100. So 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, to include 100, with a space in between each value, and all, this, all the values printed on one line. So like I said, take a moment to really think about it here, highlight or, or point out those four common elements that are common to all of our loop types and make sure that you understand what is happening here before you move on. Okay, so now that you have a little bit of understanding about uh, how the while loop works, um, we're gonna have another critical thinking question. And remember, this critical thinking question is in your video review activity. So same as before, I'm not gonna give you the answers, but I am gonna provide you those the guidance based on those questions. And remember, these questions are really important. So let me read this to you. So consider the while loop below. Rewrite the while loop statement to print the values from 100 to 0, decremented, decrementing our counter value, uh, decremented, um, no, the values are start at 100, they go to 0, zero but the values printed on screen are um, decreased by 10, each value printed, okay? So be sure to use the correct syntax. So remember those four questions that are important to ask yourself is in order to make this happen, in order to print the values from 100 to zero with each value being decreased by 10, starting at 100 and going down to zero, what does my, my counter variable uh, initialization have to be? What does my value need to start at? Okay, um, then the next thing is, is what does my condition need to be in order for the loop to run as many times as I need it to and for it to exit when I need it to? Then you also have to ask yourself, how does my counter need to be modified? 
And then lastly, ask yourself, do I need to make any changes to my code block? Okay. Okay, now we're going to look quickly at an example of a do while loop highlighting the common elements that we know about. Okay. Um, the big thing to understand about a do while loop is that unlike a for loop and a while loop that first tests the condition to be true, uh, the do while loop doesn't do that. It, it processes the loop once and then it tests its condition. Okay, so let's take a look at that. And it's important for you to know that do while loops aren't used quite as frequently as for and uh, while loops. So first thing to notice, I've got highlighted here that in this, in a do while loop, we actually have two keywords. We have do and while, and they are separated, okay, from one another. So these statements written in this way are going to tell the comp compiler that we're going to use a, a do while loop. So actually above our, our do keyword statement, we um, uh, we have our counter variable uh, declaration and in initialization statement. In this instance, it's like uh, the while loop that actually uh, declares our counter variable and initializes it above the, the um, keyword. Okay, so um, in this example, we have uh, our counter variable is x, and we've initialized x to zero. So after our do keyword, then we actually have our code block. Okay, so in this code block, we have a system out print statement that prints the current value of x followed by, by a blank state, uh, a blank space. And again, it's just a, a print statement, not a print LN statement. So the, the print, um, anything that we print is all gonna be on one line, okay? After the print statement, we have our, uh, our variable, our counter modification statement. Okay, like the while statement, the do while has a counter modification statement that's listed within the code block. Okay, so in this example, our counter variable x is being incremented by 100. So after the code block is closed with that curly bracket, we have the while keyword, and then finally, we have our condition statement. So uh, the condition statement says that as long as x is less than or equal to 500, the do, uh, do while loop should be processed again. Remember, the do while loop is going to process at least one time. It's going to process through, and then it's going to check the condition statement. If the condition statement is true, then it's going to go back and it's going to run through the process a second time. Then it's going to, you know, check for true again and pro process as many times as necessary. But the do while is very different than the for and the while loop. Remember, it is going to process at least one time and then its condition is going to be checked. The for and the while loop will check the condition first and then process if necessary. Okay. So in this instance, the do while loop will run once printing the value of X, which is uh, initialized at zero it will print zero to the screen, okay? Um, X is then incremented by 100, so X's value then becomes 100. That happens within the code block. Then the condition statement tests again to true, um, and or no, the condition statement tests to see if our new value, which X is now 100, is actually um, less than or equal to 500. Okay, so this will continue to, this code loop will continue to process so long as X is less than or equal to 500. So if we were to actually compile this program that is listed, you know, on the screen here, we'd get this, uh, we would get this output where we start our first thing printed to screen is the current, is the first value, the start value of X, which is zero space. And then we increment X by 100 until X is no longer less than or equal to 500. So we would have 0, 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500 on screen. 
Okay, finally, we're going to talk about infinite loops. An infinite loop is a loop that has been written in such a way that the pro program never exits the loop. An infinite loop exists when a con loop's condition statement never evaluates as false. This is not a good thing. So the repeating of the looping process will eventually, it'll just eat away at your, com uh, your computer's memory until the system eventually crashes. Okay, the computer itself won't crash, but the program that you're running the, the Java on will crash, you know, so Blue Jay or whatever will crash, it'll freeze or whatnot. Okay, so the following here is an example of an infinite loop. Looking at the loop, you see that we have a while loop because of the while keyword. The variable i has been declared and initialized to zero. The while loop then tests the condition i is greater than or equal to zero which in its current iteration is true. Zero is, e is greater than or equal to zero. So the program enters the code block. The system prints the statement, um, the, the prints the value of i, which is zero, to the screen. And then it increments i, which is zero, by 10. So now i's new value is 10. So then it goes, ends the code block, it goes back up to the condition statement, and it tests the condition again. So it says, it asks the compiler, hey, is i, which is now 10, greater than or equal to zero? Yep, this is true. So the code block runs again. i is printed to the screen, so 10 is printed to the screen. A space is printed, and then i is increased from 10 to 20. We reach the end of the code block. The condition is then tested again. Is 20 less? Uh, greater than or equal to zero. Yes, it is. We go back in to the code block. And as you can see, we're only just increasing the value of i. So in this instance, i will always be uh, greater than or equal to zero. So based on the way that this loop is written, the condition statement will always be true. This is an infinite loop. And the loop once started will not exit until all the memory is gone and the system crashes. Okay, so that's what an infinite loop is. Okay, so it's important to note that even the best programmers create infinite loops accidentally, okay? If you find you've created an infinite loop and your, your BlueJ is frozen, um, you just need to stop the program's execution in BlueJ. So to do that, you follow these steps. So you go to um, the Blue, BlueJ project window. You have to make sure you're in the project window. You click Tools in the menu bar, and then you're going to go ahead and click Reset Java Virtual Machine. So this will stop that infinite loop from happening, and you'll be able to go into the uh, program text into your class and fix your uh, the infinite loop. Okay, with that, you're all done with reviewing this video. So now you can go ahead and start to complete the questions that go along with this uh, video review activity. Best of luck. Like always, ask questions if you have them, okay?